Well, 12 years ago, we walked into a pet store and walked out with a little black and white husky named Eve. Our lives were changed forever. We had this amazing trip across Canada. They were just the most amazing experiences. And then my illness reared its ugly head again. Can you speak yet? No. We've had, at that point, been to see a million different doctors and specialists and ER visits. So you go, okay, well, next time it, there'll be an answer, and, and then it was like a day, and then it was like a week, and then it was like a month, and then it was like years. You've passed away on July 24th, 2019, about six months or so after Son started to get better. The loss was so profound, I think more so than my illness, more so than anything that I've ever gone through. Oh, do I miss her. And just like that, our family changed. I lost my heart dog, Ice and Montana lost their sister, and a hole that could never be filled opened up and swallowed us whole. But our story isn't special. It's just like everyone else's. You're born, you find your person or your pet, you experience the highs that come from the joys in life and the lows that come with illness and loss. But within that, there's always rebirth. Just when it felt like our lives would never be the same, the journey started again. A tiny red husky was born. Our tiny red husky, Poppy. Ice is so excited right now. <laughs> Anybody who's ever had a dog um, or a pet pass away on them, when you eventually do get a new pet, it's never to replace the original. It's not, you can't, you just can't, it's not possible. We had a conversation after Eve passed and it was around whether or not we were going to continue to be these husky people that we'd been for the last 12 years, or if it was just gonna be that we moved, moved past this stage in our lives and learned everything from it and moved on. And we decided that we will always have three huskies. I think, you know, there'll be transition periods, but I think we're, th we're three husky. <laughs> That's so weird to say. Um, we're three husky people. Come on, baby pups. Having Poppy know the other two dogs was really important to sort of pass on some of the traits, and it, it's worked. <laughs> it's worked. Yeah, yeah, the trick worked. Yeah. <laughs> She's much better in some ways, and then other in other ways, they've taught her all of their horrible, horrible characteristics, and um, so we will have those to cherish for the next, you know, 12 to 15 years, which is the lifespan of a husky. Get her, Minty. Come on. Get Everybody during COVID got a dog, um, and we were no different. We had planned to get a dog actually later in 2020, towards the end, right about right now, and we got her actually, um, she was born in February, and we got her in... Uh, it was like the very beginning of May. Yeah. yeah, and so having Poppy has just made quarantining um, eventful. She came to us at the exact time that we were ready um, after Eve passed and we had this little puppy who kept us busy and distracted us and any time when we wanted to be sad she would do something stupid like eat something or break something or and it was just perfect and she's never let us for one minute put our guard down and be sad or bored or anything like that so that's also been good during quarantine Go girl. as far as like mischief and like misbehaving and stuff oh she's God. like all three of the first ones put together are you bad hey don't what do you think you're doing get no 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 lie down lie down ow she's hilarious like super so super funny. funny goofy dog she literally chews like a kid who's like having to eat broccoli all the time but even when she likes something it's like and food falls out of her mouth. Like she's just, there's just never a dull moment with the dog. Like she's just screaming at you. She's the most vocal of all of our huskies. Oh, big time. By yeah. far. The other three have always been Quiet. 
pretty quiet. Like they barely ever make a noise. Mm -hmm. And she can't stop. Like to the point where sometimes I just want to be like, leave me alone. <laughs> Can you stop biting my oh, hand? Take me for a walk. And then she like throws up. <laughs> She's like, I choke. <laughs> Dustin got Eve and Eve was my dog. I got Poppy. I sort of was the one who pushed more and, and sought out, like starting the process to get a dog. She happened sooner than expected. And Dustin had sort of expressed, I don't know if I'm ready yet. And then she was coming to us. And uh, she's Dustin's dog. She picked Dustin. And it's been really cool to watch Dustin and Poppy because as much as she drives him absolutely batshit crazy, he loves her. And I know he loves all of her dogs. He's loved every single one. But like watching him with Poppy, she adores him. When he's not in the room, she screams for him. She wants Dustin. And Dustin will come because he's so irritated by her <laughs> high-pitched scream. And he just takes her head in his hands and looks into her eyes. And she just gazes up at him. And it's just like, it's the most beautiful. On cue, as she's screaming, right, literally. I can't make this shit up. <laughs> Poppy, shush. We're busy. Shh. <laughs> shh. Oh, shit. You want some water? Bring her over here. She wants water. We should bring, we should actually bring her to the couch right now just for a little, a sec. Poppy, Poppy come up. on. Come on. Up, up. Go, girl. Oh, oh yes. Oh, oh. Sit. Oh, sit. okay. Relax. Mm -hmm. You sit on your bum. Sit on your bum. Shh. Shh. Sit right here with mom and dad. Oh, you... shockingly, she goes to Dustin's <laughs> lap. So this is Poppy. <laughs> <laughs> she's inserted herself into our filming. Clearly she's a red husky. Um, it is our second red husky, although she's slightly different coloring than Montana. She looks like a coyote. Yeah, we call her a coyote burrito. Okay, all right. Uh, and she's done with us. Um, so that was Poppy. Um, and that's sort of a, in a nutshell what she's like. She comes in, she screams, she causes all sorts of chaos, and then she runs away again. Probably to go cause more mischief. So what now? Well, for me now, I'm back at university, but for a completely different thing. I'm finishing my degree so that I can teach high school, spend as much time as we can with the dogs, doing as much outdoor stuff as we possibly can. YouTubing. We will yeah. be YouTubing. <laughs> Maybe if we learn how to use our camera, that would be good. Read a manual, do a tutorial, yeah. one of those types of things Maybe. that people do before they start their YouTube channel. Well, like everything over the course of the last 12 years has completely shifted, whether it was Sonia's illness that made it happen or um, just by happenstance during the, the course of the dog's lives. I mean, we both changed careers entirely. At one point I was gonna be a doctor. I was in pre-med at university. I kind of came to the realization that like, that wasn't going to allow me to live the life I wanted to live. I'd be way too busy with work and stuff and I wouldn't get to do the things I liked to do and wanted to do, which was spend time with my dogs. I know for Sonia, it, sort of helped you kind of change paths as well. I thought I wanted to be a lawyer. One of the things that my illness taught me and that the dogs taught me was to slow down and you know that you have to take the time to be outside and to enjoy your life and embrace what I really enjoy doing which is is writing and, and telling stories. I think that my dogs are the biggest story of my life, that their story this, this story and, and our story was something that was really important for me to tell. And that's what we were meant to do. That's what we were always meant to do, but it took a bunch of dogs and an illness to get us there. Some travel ideas we want to do at some point in the future. I would like to do another cross Canada road trip, but I think would there's, you? there's, I think there's a couple other <laughs> um, road trips that would be fun too. Like I think it would be cool to go to Alaska. Alaska. Um, I think it would be fun to do the California coast too. Wait, let's not go, we won't do that during COVID. But well, after COVID- You we'll... realize Alaska is technically the United States as well, right? But you could just go <laughs> to the border and then just wave and then, you know, come back to the safety of Canada. No, yeah. the... Just go hang out in the Yukon instead. <laughs> go out there. Last summer, we went on our first road trip in almost five years. We took a ferry, stayed in the smallest tiny house imaginable, explored the coast, got pictures taken, and filmed the trailer for this series. It was the first time since we lost Eve that our family finally felt whole again. Why do you call Eve the best mistake you ever made? I think because Eve wasn't supposed to happen, 
we had this sort of... Well, hold on. You always wanted her to happen. Am I answering this or not? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think because Eve wasn't supposed to happen, and we kind of had a pretty clear like life path for both of us in mind, and then she came along and it completely changed everything, and we changed careers, we changed everything to reshape our lives around being these people that have huskies and that's sort of become, I don't want to say it's become our identity, but it's kind of become our identity, right? It has. The life we would have led if we hadn't had her would have been so much more empty and not filled with as much excitement and craziness and joy and our relationships benefited from having dogs. Our lives have benefited from having dogs, even with all the hard times and you know her passing away early, what we feel early. I'd do it all over again in a heartbeat, just out of that time. So she was the best mistake, the absolute best mistake, with a smile <laughs> that that we ever could have. Well, we didn't even imagine it. I didn't. You did good, kid. You're welcome. <laughs> Sometimes life feels like a never-ending circle where you go through so much only to wind up back at the start. But it's the journey itself that changes you, that shapes your perspective in a way no other series of events could have. You're different. The way you view the world is different. And the beauty in that is so worth everything you went through to get there. So hold on and embrace it. The love, the loss, the light. And allow yourself to come out the other side better, different somehow, changed. Where everything is different and nothing is different all at once. Three. Good girls. <laughs>